Welcome to Better Business Results. My name is John Witt, and I'm your host. We work with business owners, executives, entrepreneurs, and sales teams to improve their businesses in 30 minutes or less. I'm a small business owner, a published author, and a recognized leader with Focal Point International Business Coaching, where we have over 180 coaches on all seven continents. Albert Einstein is quoted as saying that compound interest is the most powerful formula in the universe. Improving your business one-tenth of one percent each day can generate as much as a 24% improvement in less than one year. You can engage and harness this formula for your business by creating three action items in just 30 minutes each week. Let's get started. We'll get a little countdown here. Okay. And today our guest is David Eisenbach with uh, Desiree Cheesecakes. So Hello. David, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Um, as we get started, let's tell the audience, the viewer, a little bit about your cheesecake story? Well, my cheesecake story, I started uh, making cheesecakes for families and individuals about 15 years ago. Why, why did, wait, before you do that, why did you start doing it? Why did you start making, what, what bits about cheesecakes? Be, to uh, create a uh, memorable experience with the cheesecake and uh, after having been to New York on a vacation and trying it and what a really good cheesecake is, wasn't able to uh, get that here in California. And uh, so I decided to make it and um, create uh, a really flavorful, uh, nice texture t cheesecake that people can uh, uh, enjoy when they come over my house for parties and things like that. And that's how that started uh, about 15 years ago. So that's when you started, first started making cheesecakes? Just for family okay. and for family events, yes. All right. And it's kind of blossomed since then. What are some of the other things that happened? How did you get from there to Desiree's? Well, uh, a couple of months ago, um, I was invited uh, at, a, at a party uh, hosted by a, uh, a chef who was doing training on cooking, and I, and I was asked to video it. And I offered, can I bring a cheesecake? And they said, well, certainly. And uh, up until that time, no chef has ever tried my cheesecake, so I really didn't know how good they were. Uh, just thought that we liked them. And uh, so they all had the cheesecake, and the, sh the professional chef was saying that this was outstanding. And I just never had that kind of uh, critique before. Yeah, feedback. And then, yeah, or feedback. And then a couple of weeks later, um, I was found myself in Seal Beach, and uh, we were at a restaurant at the time, and it was the only one open, and we walked in, and I remarked to my wife that, you know, wow, what a nice place to offer my cheesecake. And uh, cheesecake wasn't offered on the menu, and the owner was there, and he sat down with us, and I said, how come you don't have cheesecake? And he goes, interesting you ask. I've been looking for a cheesecake. And a week later, I provided him a sample of mine, and it went from there. So I had a customer in hand. And that's how I needed to incorporate, and I needed to get my licensing and everything, and insurance, which is a big thing. So we're going to talk about a lot of that stuff as we go through the activities for, for your particular business. But it's kind of an interesting story. I mean, you had the, the, the New York experience, couldn't find it here, started to do your own thing, create the try to recreate that experience. Yes. Uh, and then found out from others that this was something else, and, and something inside you said, well, based on the feedback that I've got from... Uh, this party, this event, that, that this could turn into a business opportunity. And you like making cheesecakes. Yes. Yes, I do. I do. It's, uh, I, I like watching the experience that people have when they eat it more than the actual making it. So, Fair enough. Yeah, the, the result. I mean, it's okay mixing batter and, you know, you know, that's okay. But I'm usually talking, and that was one of, miraculously, how my recipe was perfected. One time when mixing it up, it was with a friend who wanted to watch me make it, and I wasn't paying attention to how long I was mixing it, just talking. Oh, wow. And it turned out the texture was phenomenal when I started after that. I started that, So that came by accident, too, a lot of it. All right, so, so that was part of your growth in learning how to make this, this, yes. this cheesecake. Absolutely. Right? Um, and, and so your cheesecakes, we were talking about it. Who, who are the types of, who, who do you think the ideal customer is for, for your type of? Fine cuisine. Fine cuisine. Yes, so that would include uh, fine cuisine restaurants, caterers, hotels. Yeah, so. and so and, and the, it, part of it, I mean, I, I realize it's it's not a uh, it's a high end product. Right? Yes, you know when you talk about the you know quality and, and uh, delivery and service and all those other kinds of things, share a little bit about you know what makes it fit in that area. 
is the, again, the flavor and the texture. Uh, it's not too sweet. It's not too cream cheesy. It, uh, uh, some uh, cheesecake, for example, New York is very dense. Californians don't like it quite that dense. But some restaurants, upscale restaurants here in California, has the texture of flan. Uh, it's too much custardy kind of a texture. And uh, I make it more dense, but less dense than New York, where it's fluffy, but it's got the right texture that you just can't find here uh, in California. So texture is a big component, and I think it's a big component of any, yes. anything that we, we eat. And I'm, you know, I'm a little bit of a foodie myself. Um, and you've tried it. As much, and I've tried it. I, I think it's fabulous. Um, and then the flavor thing. You've done some, uh, some learning about the flavor. Yes. Uh, it's not too sweet. It's, uh, and we have different flavors which have different level of sweetness, but it's all got the fundamental of the same. Uh, whether it's a chocolate cheesecake, our lemon cheesecake, our New York cheesecake, the fundamental is the same throughout. The texture is the same. The consistency is the same. The crust might be different. Um, but, um, and I've also learned after s selling um, to different people that how important the crust really is. I usually downplay it, put a very thin crust, and I've been asked repeatedly, make the crust thicker. Oh, really? Okay, I can do that, and people love that a lot more. Mm -hmm. And so that was a uh, that was interesting learning. I thought people would like the cake more than the crust, but that's not always the case. And it's the combination sometimes of how that, how it really makes it makes it work. Uh, and so so you actually uh, <laughs> serendipitously uh, found a client while you were having dinner in Seal Beach. What what this is your first client? Who are they? Yes, Cafe Lafayette. Cafe Lafayette. And right. um, I also exclusively market to them only in Seal Beach. Okay. So I made the agreement that I wouldn't market to any other of the restaurants in the in the area there because it's a cluster okay. of uh, restaurants, very highly competitive there. Okay. So let's talk about them. And, and, and so they're the, the type of restaurant uh, purveyor uh, that, you know, upscale fine cuisine, right? Yes. That, that you would feel benefits for it. Um, what are the typical challenges and problems that they have uh, when it comes to cheesecake or desserts or anything? Well, um, I think it, he couldn't find, before I came along, a cheesecake that he liked um, or that he could sell at a profit. I think that was another issue as well. Excuse me. Um, he's a cheesecake lover, and um, he's a great guy. He bought the restaurant last summer, and uh, he loved mine and he even liked my chocolate cheesecake that I provided afterwards um, even more. So um, it was a big hit with his customers. He loved seeing the reaction from his customers. He was emailing me at first, uh, the reaction of the customers. So one of the challenges for, for restaurants in general is, you know, recreating and maintaining the experience that they're trying to generate for their, exactly. their customers. And at a profit, it's, it's difficult to generate a profit in the restaurant business. Well, it's not easy, um, but but really, if we can't create the experience, we're not going to get the profit in the Correct. first place, right? So Correct. we have to focus on the, the the core competency there, which is the the experience and, and getting somebody that that has the ability to deliver a product that presents that experience. Yes, that's one of the challenges that the restaurant. What are what are some of the other things that they have challenges with when it comes to? Uh, I think well, probably consistency. Okay, um, and. Uh, can, okay, they, they know that the product is good, can it be consistently good next week and the week after? That's a big thing. Uh, the other thing is um, uh, proper storage and proper food storage of the particular item that they're offering. Um, a cheesecake is, produces a couple of challenges because it needs to be deeply chilled but not frozen. And if it's not chilled quite enough, you get too much of the cream cheese flavor, which mm -hmm. can be objectionable, which is why I learned how to make cheesecakes, because when I found it, it was either too much cream cheese in it, or maybe, looking back on it, that could have been because it wasn't adequately chilled, and it had too much of the cream cheese flavor in it. Yeah. So in terms of quality, I mean, you're talking about getting into, you know, what the chilled rate should be, and where it should be stored in the refrigerator, or... Those kind of things. You know, yes. all kinds of things. And so quality is a big component of what these, yes. what, what your clients are really looking for, consistent reliable quality that provides the experience. Correct. Um, so then how do you satisfy those needs? Well, I use the finest ingredients. Um, I, I have a feel for what the texture should be, so my texture comes out the same on all my cheesecakes. 
um, and uh, it's not too sweet, it's not too cream cheesy, and it's adequately chilled. And it's delivered to them chilled. It's, uh, it's served over ice in a cooler, and so it, it ha it, it's the same temperature in the cooler when I deliver it as it is out of my refrigerator. So that's also very important. Okay, so that gives them some of the <coughs> consistency and the reliability. Correct. When they go to like Restaurant Depot, if a restaurant owner goes to Restaurant Depot and buys it out of the freezer, okay, by the time he gets it to his restaurant, it's coming out of the freezer and going into the refrigerator. So already there's preservatives in that. The manufacturer anter anticipates that, puts preservatives in it, but all that affects the texture. It's not the same as a freshly made right. cheesecake. Right. The longevity is, though, m m there when you defrost uh, a manufactured cheesecake, it's got the same s shelf life as mine does, about three to five days. Okay. So... All right. That only allows them to freeze it. Okay, good. Um, and so in terms of, of quality, I mean, what, we've talked a little bit about it, the finest ingredients, what does that mean? Um, well, no artificial ingredients. Um, the, the, the highest quality ingredients, for example, the chocolate cheesecake is Ghirardelli's chocolate. That's an expensive chocolate. Um, I could use a baker's chocolate, and I did when I first was trying out. It made a world of difference. Okay. And uh, so... Those kind of things is what the customer will experience when they try the cheesecake. It, it does make a difference. All right. And so uh, the gentleman in Seal Beach, your first customer, I mean, what, what is the, you know, at, at the end of the day, you know, what's the big thing that he gets out of being able to serve your cheesecake to his customers? I believe it's the reaction that he sees from uh, the customers because he was emailing me their uh, reaction to it when he, when he first started serving it and he was really happy about it. So I think... That drives him, and I think that's why he likes the restaurant business uh, the way he does. So. Well, so in a lot of restaurants, uh, restaurant owners, um, probably not chains, so to speak, but custom people that have you know started their own restaurant, their own business. You know, this ability to provide you know just this experience that gives that satisfaction grade from the customer is is a part of what it is that, that drives them. Yeah, you would think. Uh, I know a lot of restaurant owners that own two or three restaurants and they're never there. They're in it for the money. And you've got other chain restaurants um, that go to uh, all the food is pre-made at a central location just heated up at the restaurants. And if you see a microwave in any kitchen in any restaurant, that's a good clue of what's going on. Um, I was at a restaurant just the other day, and, and uh, the soup came out, half of it hot in the same bowl, half of it was hot, part of it was cold when you turned the bowl around. I go, did you microwave this? And the, wait the waitress was a little hesitant to say that. And I have a problem with microwave food. I don't use a microwave at home. Well, so that's not the type of uh, client that's going to really no. appreciate or value your... It, it, your it, product exactly so you know even though we talk about fine cuisine you know we're talking about a place where the owner or the chef has a very high personal connection to the service and quality of yes and that's important too because um, again they have to when when I see the look on the expression on their face when they try my cheesecake for the first time um, then they know they'll be able to get that from their customers and uh, I have a level of confidence that they'll be able to store the cheesecake properly and serve it properly and put it on their menu and photograph it. You know, if that's what they're going to do, they're going to be able to do that competently. So, yeah. so once you started your business, you get going on, you had to come up with a name for it. How'd you come up with Desiree's? Oh, that's my daughter's middle name. Your daughter's middle name. Yes, and right. it means desire in French. Okay. So I thought that was apropos. Okay, and the, and you feel that adequately represents the product that, that you've put together, right? Yes, yes. Um, it's very difficult to come up with a name for a food uh, or for a food company. And the actual company is Desiree Wholesale Bakery, Inc., but that's not on my business card. It's just Desiree Cheesecake because okay. the branding is so important. Um, so people don't really care what the corporation is behind it. Well, maybe they will, but... It, it's the brand that shows up on the menu. It's Desiree's when people associate Desiree with that cheesecake experience. That's what's going to be important. Yeah. Well, no, it's totally important. But and making sure that Desiree's is is associated with this high end customer experience cheesecake. And you've got yes. four different types. What were they again? We've got plain uh, New York, 
lemon, and chocolate. And chocolate. And you're experimenting with some some other things as well. Yes. All right. Yes. Um, so so lots of fun stuff. Learning a lot because this is really pretty recent. Only been since February of yeah, 2015. Four months. You yes. know, From from sort of an experience to starting a business and get going. And what are some of the things as a business owner? Now this is something that our audience is really going to appreciate because a lot of them. Uh, have ideas about business, and may it be their food products, maybe there's something else, but this idea of starting a business, uh, what are the things that, what are some of the things that you've learned, what are some of the most important things? Well, this was the first business I've ever started that I had a customer in hand before I started the business. So it, it almost came, you know, uh, the cart before the horse here. And uh, that's an important component, a lot of businesses are started that way, having a customer in hand. Mm -hmm. So you know there's an identified need right there. And that is the the genesis of many businesses, actually. Yeah. This is a food service business. Yes. So some different things about that. Well, you've got uh, training. You've got uh, a county government regulations on health and on preparation, and where you prepare it, and how you prepare it. Um, it has to be a commercial kitchen, and the count uh, in California, almost every county has a hundred pages of construction guidelines. When you build out a kitchen, it's got to be built this way. Um, they're getting into construction here. And so um, I rent out a commercial space that's licensed in Costa Mesa. And uh, we reserve, it, it's a, they have uh, eight kitchens there, and we reserve it as we need it. And I bring in my own staff, mm -hmm. and uh, they're fully licensed, and, and then I, I'm licensed as well. And uh, so that was the one thing on the licensing and the health. Uh, the other thing is proper uh, storage of, and proper transport, proper delivery of my product. Um, when it's at the restaurant, that they can move it and slice it as they need to. Um, that, that's an issue. How do you move a cake without making it crumble? Mm -hmm. These are all important things. Well, things that you've figured out yes. and, and that go into the quality definition of, of your products, You know, certainly meeting all of the state regulations and guidelines. but. Uh, even you know the box that it goes in and the, the, the way to cut it and where and, to store it and, and fulfilling delivery times on okay. time that's the most important thing to the restaurant owner can I deliver um, consistently not only consistent flavor but consistent level of service that when he puts it on his menu available this weekend he's comfortable that knows it'll be there this weekend and it'll be what he tried maybe a month ago, it'll be at that same level. It'll be the experience, weekend. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's all a component of, of, of the quality service that you provide. Yes. So I'm going to go through a little um, principle uh, that I think, is, and we talked about this a little bit beforehand, that, that is really pretty interesting for business owners, right? And then we can take this and, uh, and we talk about where it is that you're trying to go and what it is that you need to do next. Because at the end of the day, what we really want to do here is we want to come up with three action items uh, for you to advance your business forward. Um, and the principle is that if you, uh, viewers, attendees, watchers of the show, um, you know, if they were to take the time to listen to the show and come up with three action items every week, if you were to come up with three action items every week, that would be 12 action items a, a month, right? And mm -hmm. almost 150 over the course of a year. And these aren't just the go and do things. These are the things I want to do to make my business better, the things I want to do to make my business more effective because we're actually working on the business here as opposed to working in the business. Correct. Okay, and so we can take a look at this principle. We can talk about what are some of the things that I have to work on. What are the next steps? What are the action items that are going to help move your business mm -hmm. forward? All right. So this principle we're going to talk about is a thing called the stack. And this is actually built by Brian Tracy. It's a focal point principle, but I really like it, and it's very... Uh, gives us a really good understanding of of what we're trying to get accomplished, right? And it's it's triangular in a sense, in the sense that the the foundation of the triangle or the foundation of the stack is clarity. Um, and as we're looking at clarity, this is a this is about product. It's it's the it's where ideas and products and services are born. Mm -hmm. uh, this is where we say, you know, what if I could do this, or how could I do that? And this is some of the things that you experienced as you started to learn how to make your your cheesecakes. Uh, and then you experienced it a little bit when you went to provide a cheesecake at the, at the event, and then you experienced it again when you went to, to dinner, right? Yeah. So from a clarity standpoint, we have to have some clarity about what we're trying to do before we can do anything else, and that's why it's at the bottom of the stack. So the second thing that comes up in the stack is effectiveness, right? So we have to be very effective. So we have to do the right things 
right? Mm -hmm. If we don't do the right things, we got a problem, right? And we have to do them well. We have to do them efficiently. That's what effectiveness is really all about. Now, the reality is that, you know, we can't wait uh, till you know, we have 100% clarity defined before we start being effective because we're trying to run a business mm -hmm. uh, and there's not enough time to make that kind of thing happen. Uh, but but the, we do know that if we aren't doing the right things and we aren't doing them efficiently, we really can't take it to the next level, right? And the next level is growth, or growth mm -hmm. is often referred to as marketing. So how do we then expose our product and our services to the marketplace, right? If we're very clear about what we do and, and who we're trying to reach and, and where our customers are and who those customers are, and we have a good model, a good system for delivering our products and services uh, effectively and efficiently to, to the client, then, then we're able to go out and tell them, okay, we've got this thing going on, right? Now we may, in the beginning, in a startup business, we may also say, look, uh, we just wanna tell people that we're coming, right? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes with an event, you'll send out a, a note that says save the date, right? And there's not a whole lot more detail about that, right? And so you can actually start marketing as long as you've got your ideas and your concepts, you can start saying, hey, listen, we're coming. Right? And you're not ready to sell anything yet, and I totally understand that. But you can you can begin to expose your business to the marketplace. Right. Right. So now we talk about growth. Once we have we've got marketing done, right? We can't we can't sell anything. The next thing is sales. We can't sell anything unless they know who we are and what we do and what our product and services is. Right. Uh, once they know what that is, then then there's potential that they could be a customer. And so we go through the sales process. Uh, but then ultimately we talk about leadership. And leadership's interesting because I think leadership is at the top and I think it's also at the bottom, right? So leadership at the top would be as you're growing your company and you're hiring employees and you're learning how to manage your employees, that's a really component, important component of leadership. But leadership also plays a huge role at the very beginning, right? It's the personal discipline, it's the personal leadership that allows you to focus and get the clarity done, that allows you to do be effective, that allows you to be efficient, that stays the course, that makes things happen. Mm -hmm. right? Because if you don't have personal leadership, then we don't get any of that stuff, right? Right. right. So in terms of, of, of this particular model, um, we could talk about some, some ways that maybe, um, you know, where you're at in this, right? So clarity, right? You, in four months, you really experienced uh, a lot more clarity. You have a lot more clarity today than you ever had before, yes. right? And, and even in our discussions today and, and earlier, it's been, you know, we've talked about target market and where you're going and what you're trying to do. So in terms of clarity, what are some of the things that you think you need to work on uh, right now? Um, what are some of the next steps? The next steps are being able to manufacture the cheesecake on a large scale and uh, having the training to do that because it's not a simple matter of just doubling your ingredients and having double the output. Uh, when you're working with certain wet ingredients in baking, the proportions don't work out right. And so um, I have identified um, some trainers that are professional and uh, will be able to provide the training that I need to take it to the next step. I can do two, three at a time. I need to know how to do 10 at a time. That's really the foundation. That's right your there. next step. Yes. If I can do 10, then I can do 1,000. Okay. It starts with being able to do 10 at a time in bulk. <clears throat> and uh, it's more than just um, a mixture. It, it's the, the bulk product comes out differently um, when you buy it, when you get it at a restaurant supplier and then at the grocery store and it's the same name brand but moisture levels are different uh, content slightly different and uh, I had to originally throw away 10 chick cakes to make three because the, the it just wasn't the same yeah but you're managing your quality right yeah that's 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 pretty interesting so I mean there's but a lot going of to a grocery store is not profitable and making one, two, three at a time is great for marketing purposes. Here, try my cake, but that's not going to fulfill an order of fifty. If I, you know, when somebody says I need fifty by next week, um, I have to learn how to get to that level before I can promise them that I'll be able to do that. Okay. So. Well, and that that also ties into efficiency and effectiveness, right? Yes. I need to be able to do ten. That that's effective, right? Three. It's effective for marketing. Right. It's not effective for production. Correct. Okay. And if you do ten a week, then ten a day, right? Is that what, yeah. is that what you're kind of thinking of? Ten or ten at a time? If you were able to make ten at a time, how many could you make in a day? Then it's unlimited. Then it's just a factor of hiring. Well, there's how people. many hours? Right, for hiring people. Well, right. Then I could hire, easily hire people to to and leverage that time. So it's unlimited. It's the 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 magic number is ten. Okay. Um, I can multiply that times 
infinite amount. It's just a function of staffing, and the staffing is easy. Once I being able to know, then I can train a staff worker to do it. Okay. That's easy. Well, anything else that pops up from a clarity standpoint that you think you need to work on? Uh, I, that's that's really the one I issue. Um, the marketing will be easy for me. Well, what about what about identifying who your ideal customer is? Now we talked about fine cuisine. Yes. Right. But if you were to drive into, and we also talked about you know that that owner or that chef that is you know takes such a personal interest in the experience that the customer receives. How are you going to find that person? Well, that's there's a lot of restaurants out there like that. Um, that's not hard to find, um, and I am. And I, so I don't. I you know again. I, I'm not familiar with this. How, how would you go about doing that? Any uh, restaurant, upscale restaurant that doesn't that doesn't offer cheesecake, in, except for an Italian restaurant because they they like more on other areas than cheesecake. But any upscale restaurant that has what I consider an inferior product. Or doesn't offer it is a potential client, but not the ideal one. The ideal one is like the guy you have in Seal Beach, right? Who is taking a personal interest and desire in yes. the experience. Now, there's there's plenty of restaurants out there where that doesn't occur, right? Yes, they're not going to be as excited about your stuff as that guy. That's that's correct. That's the guy. That's the type of owner. That's the type of person that we're looking for. How are we going to find that person? That will take um, pounding the pavement, you know, um, and seeking out, um, s seeing how, you know, I was able to identify him very easily because this particular owner, my client, he walks around on the tables and he's a chatty guy and he makes sure that everybody's experience has, is a good one at his restaurant. That's easy to identify. That's an owner who cares about the product that he provides. So any manager who does that, um, in the restaurant it may not be the owner, but it could be the manager at a managerial level. Then I know that that is a potential client, um, and uh, they're out there. They're out well, there. Well, no, but, but it's about finding out who that that particular person is. I mean, yes. there's a lot of restaurants, and they serve good food. And, it's, it's not and hotel business. restaurants, okay. um, hotels, uh, the upscale, uh, fine hotels, are very particular about the restaurants that are in there. In their lobbies, okay, and that serve their clients, and uh, that also is a potential, big potential customer. All right, so you need to go figure out who the actual name of the person and the restaurants that you want to approach first, because you can't do everybody at once. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, you just if you could just come up with five. And I can't do one where the corporate office is back in back east, and so they make all the buying decisions. It has to be a restaurant where the general manager is local that can make the bot the purchasing decision. Okay. Now is there a particular um, location or area that you think would be important to start with first? Just yeah, I got to concentrate on um, Orange County, okay. I think, and uh, and then can consider going expanding from there. Okay. But because of perishability is an issue and I'll be delivering them myself um, well, until I can't, the team gets built. Until the team gets built. Yeah, initially uh -huh. I'll be delivering them myself. I it has to um, perishability will dictate my probably my market area more than anything else. Okay, so if we're going to expose this video that we're doing here today to potential customers, who are you going to send it to? I will send it um, probably. Uh, well, I'll definitely send it to. Uh, uh, I haven't really determined. I've got a couple ideas, um, but so that's part of the clarity part that I'm trying to get to here, right? Yes. Is who specifically? I'm going to send it to George at X Y Z Restaurant. Yeah. Right? Who am I going to send that to? So so that's a part of clarity that you can work on now that then supports the growth or marketing feature of the stack. Correct. Okay? And, uh, you know, you're going to have that opportunity uh, tomorrow. Right. right. So when should you do that? Well, immediately, um, going home tonight, I'll identify companies and then find out the names. Yeah. So we've identified some of the care criteria and the characteristics more than just fine cuisine. We've kind of d dug into it a little bit mm -hmm. of uh, you know the personality and the style and the behavior of the person who would really uh, most benefit from your product and service. Yes. Uh, and then you know you may have to go visit the restaurant. And, and well, that's see what absolutely it's like. yes. Yeah. Yes, um, absolutely. I, um, I'm not selling to them blind. It's a good problem to have. You have to go visit the restaurant and eat at all these nice Correct. places. <laughs> I, I, I could, I could go with that. That'd be pretty easy. Yeah. So, 
Um, and then, so so what about, is there anything else from an effectiveness or efficiency standpoint that you need to work on? So we've got, we've got a little marketing thing, we've got this clarity thing about how do I make 10, right? right? Th that's, my main, that's my main stumbling block at this point, is the making the 10. Once I go from there, any other stumbling issues that come in, I'll be able to deal with. Okay. Um, what do you think is the, the biggest challenge with making the 10 today? Uh, the biggest challenge right now is finding the right person who will be able to train what specifically what I need to do. Uh, I found, like for example, a lot of baking classes out there. Well, that's not really what I need. I need one specific thing on how to do X. You know, that's a very limited thing. I don't need to sit in a class of how to bake cookies for that. You know, that's not going to resolve what I need to do. So I've got, I know exactly what I need to learn. It's very specific. And how are you uh, going to find the trainer then? Well, um, that that's kind of the, the tough thing. Um, a big food supplier thought they were able to do that, and then turned out they're not set up to do that. So I'm on my own. But so who do you, who do you know? What, is there anybody at any of these restaurants that that you think are going to benefit that might know this? Yes, as a matter of fact, um, I've identified one particular um, in Fashion Island. There's a restaurant there that provides baking classes and I talked to the manager there. I said I don't really need the class but I told him my issue, what I need. And he goes, you need to contact our trainer who does these classes. He'll be able to train you or point you in the direction of where you need to go. Okay, so start, starting with that. That is That was the best news that came out last week. Okay. So um, that I feel I'm one step closer. So okay. uh, would any of these chefs, I mean, if you had a conversation with a chef, one of these chefs or these owners that is in this space, would they know more? I mean, get that, maybe that's how you started, right? You could, actually went to a class or to a restaurant that teaches. Well, well, I was at Fashion Island, just happened to be there. I didn't go there to seek that out. And, oh, wow, they offer classes. I'll talk to them. But I, I never took a class in my life. On, on well, you baking. said something. There was something about baking and cooking. There's a one's an art, one's a science. How does that work? Yes, um, cooking is an art. Baking is a science, because and typically most chefs don't like to do both. They like to add a little bit of this and a little bit of that. They taste it, um, and that's their general recipe. Where I'm more of a, how much of this do I need to add? How much of that? And I measure it, and that is the really science specific. of baking. Yes. Because I don't have that ability, I didn't grow up with it. Uh, oh, I know, I need to add a little bit of here and it'll be okay. So give me a recipe that I can know I can add this. It's like my chemistry lab when I was in college. Do this, do that, do that, and it'll produce this. Excuse me. So that's why baking appeals to me. Yeah, well, you're, you, you know, and this is also how you're going to get to that consistent quality, right? It's not going to be about pinching this and that because. You know, at some point you're going to be making a lot more cakes than you personally can make. That's right. right. And, and they're going to have to follow this thing to a T. Exactly. Right? Down exactly. to the whatever decimal point. D and down to the texture of it and when you're mixing the batter, how you have that, how you know when it's ready to be put in the oven. Um, that just takes experience that's going to have to be programmed into a computer ultimately. Okay. And so what's your goal as far as trying to get these uh, 10 get 10 done at a time, get this problem solved. Then to get to a level of 500 a day or 500 Well, no, wait, wait. When are you trying to get to 10, right? That's our goal right now. Oh, so when? We need to get to this 10, right? Is that something you want to do this week, next week, within the next couple of days? What? Oh, well, I would love to be able to do that as soon as possible. My only restriction is knowing how to do it. Um, and so that's what's your target? As soon as possible, you have to put a date. What's yes. Your target? Uh, my target is uh, decided June. Um, June? By June 30th. June 30th. Yes. Right? So you're going to solve this 10 cake challenge by June 30th. Yes. Right. And today's the 17th. 17th. We got 13 days. Yes. Okay. Yes. Good. So, um, and if I haven't solved it by June 30th, then I'm on my way to solving it a few days later. You know, you know. In other words, by June 30th, I have the specific roadmap. I've identified. Yes, this is the person will be able to do it, and maybe there's a calendar timing thing. But then I'll have scheduled by June 30th at least the time to be able to where I'll be able to accomplish that. So. Okay, okay. Um, Desiree's, how would people How would people find you? How would, is there a phone number, website, email uh, address? Yeah, don't have a website yet. Um, I have an email. It's davidae at earthlink.net. Okay, um, we're going to get a Desiree's email here one of these days. Yes, yes. When, I, when I'm able to market and guarantee 
a delivery of 50 or 100, whatever somebody wants, then I'll be able to produce a website and have, you know, um, when I can make promises, that's when I'll have an well, official you know, website. So I'm, I'm going to back up just a little bit because I think you're putting some constraints on yourself that aren't necessarily uh, real. They're self-imposed constraints as opposed to actual constraints. So you can go to GoDaddy right now and for 10 bucks you can yes. set up an email account and Desiree's becomes a real company. Yes. Right? Now you've already spent the time and the energy to get incorporated and all the other kinds of things. Um, and, and having an Earthlink uh, email address, and I tell this to everybody all the time, a Gmail e address or an Earthlink email address or an AL, that is not a company address, right? That is not a legitimate business address, yes. right? Yeah. And so your branding and your image and everything else is going to take a hit until you get that fixed, right? So you can go get that fixed right now for $10. You don't need a website because GoDaddy can host the domain and they can give you right. the email and you can add the website later. So if people wanted to reach you, they could hit you with, uh, you know, David at Desirees.com. Correct. Whatever you decide to, yeah, you're right, to, right. to make it. So, I mean, you could do that right now. So, so some of the branding and marketing activity that you've kind of said, look, I can't do it until there, but that's not really true. We could do some of this stuff right now. When we look at the stack, it's not a linear progression, right? You can't Correct. do A and then B and then C. There's not enough time, right? So we have to do a little bit of A. We have to get that clarity thing so that we can do some e, some some effectiveness so that we can do some marketing, right? You're not ready to sell stuff today. I understand that. Um, but you are ready to position the bottom three of those things. And then your personal leadership is certainly taking a role from step one to step two. So yes. I encourage you not to uh, get caught up in uh, restricting your opportunities from a marketing standpoint um, just because you have some things to do to to build out the product, so save the yeah. date. We're coming. Here's how you get a hold of us. Uh, do they have a phone number, or do you want them to call? Yeah, you? Uh, uh, my phone number is seven one four four two seven zero six one one. And um, the most important thing is I do have the products, and uh, my products are very good. Absolutely. And Without those, we have nothing. You're correct. Un understood. Uh, but you got them. So now we got to yes. now the business thing has to come in and do that. And do that other stuff. Right? Correct. So, how fast are you going to put a Desirees.com email well, address I, together? Yeah, I can. I will probably. Now that you're mentioning that, I probably will get that handled probably by uh, the end of next week. Okay. Well, by the end of next week, I can. All right. Uh, and the only challenge you have is if somebody else has taken Desirees.com, you'll have to figure that out, right? Because they can't. Sell yeah, it but that's easy to be able to find that out, and the, it can make any def, any variation of Desirees can add. Desiree's cheesecakes.com or Desiree, you know. You'll have to create that so that Correct. people could send an email to you at that. So yes. That's, so that's another thing you could work on right now. So, yes. So when we talked about uh, when I get clarity, the, your three action items. Yes. Right? You remember what they were? The uh, the three action items were the training. Uh huh. Okay. Learning how to get to 10. Right. Learning how to get to 10. Uh huh. Um, the other action item is the, the website. Okay. Email marketing. address. Well, yeah, the email address. The email address can be done right now. You're not ready to do a website. I certainly understand yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. Well, the yeah, the email address and the third one was what was the third one? The third one is in marketing. Was identifying the customers that you were the potential customers you want to reach oh, yeah, out to right, right okay. away. Yeah. Right? Yeah. How, yeah. How, you know, so so can you take some steps on all three of those things, right? In the next week, within yes. the next five days. Yes, right? definitely. Because you, know, you could reach out and find out an email, and so so then you know literally your next week you're three items closer to where you want to be. Right. right. And next week, tune into the show, right, and follow that one, and come up with three no, three more action items. Right, right, right? right. And this is just a way for you to advance your business. Now, in the beginning, you're you're able to spend a little bit more time on the planning side. As you get busier and busier and busier, you have to deliver and service your customers. It gets harder and harder. Um, and so you're able to probably do more than three action items a week uh, today. But um, as time goes by, getting three and staying with the rule of three is a very effective solution for growing your business. Yeah. So, David, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I really it appreciate pleasure. it. Good pleasure. job. Thank you. All right, all. We'll talk to you again next week. If you'd like to be a guest on our show, contact BusinessWit at www.businesswit.com. Filmed in studio at John Witt Enterprises, Advanced Coaching and Marketing Solutions, 2 Park Plaza, number 450, Irvine, California, 92614.